This week's reading comes from Ephesians 6, verse 18. Again, this is Ephesians 6, verse 18, and I'm reading from the New American Standard Edition. With every prayer and request, uh, with every prayer and request, pray at all times in the Spirit, and with this in view, be alert with all perseverance and every request for all the saints. Thank the Lord for this reading of His Word and the message that Pastor and Tara will give us today. Well, good morning, everybody, and happy Sabbath to you. It's great to be here. We didn't expect half as many people to be here today. We actually, the church is nice and full, and we're still missing a whole bunch of people who are typically here. So uh, God is very good. And welcome to our visitors. Uh, It's always exciting when we have visitors come through the door. Um, If you're just stopping in on vacation, well, we hope the next time you come back, you'll, you'll visit us. You'll discover, if you haven't already, that we are very relaxed church. We love Jesus. We love to lift up his name. Uh, We love to give each other an opportunity to praise his name. And and what a great uh, witness that was that, Caitlin, you gave to the Lord. And, you know, it takes a lot of courage to come up front and and to sing. And when we see young people do that, it's Mm -hmm. especially important and especially uh, exciting. And that actually had one of your most favorite scriptures in it. It did. Yep, that's right. Um, So you picked a good one, Caitlin. You really did. (laughs) Uh, you'll have to send me the, the link to that, to that original song. I, I really like that a lot. Uh, what a powerful message, isn't that? You know, the God who is in the storm, uh, we can hold on to him. He doesn't always get rid of the storm, uh, but we can hold on to him in the storm and know that he is there by faith. Uh, and he certainly is, and so we're very thankful for that. Well, we're excited to, um, really not excited to wrap up this series, but we're excited that we are kind of wrapping it up today, in a sense, because um, it's really an incomplete series unless we talk about prayer. Um, And really, it's my wife and my prayer that this has been a blessing to you. We've tried to share the armor of God in a practical way, so it's not just so conceptual and scriptural, and it doesn't, you can't really relate to it in your everyday life, right? Yeah. So hopefully, um, you've enjoyed it. We've learned some things that we didn't know before, and that was an exciting journey for us uh, as well. And it was really nice, even though we were running from church to church, it was nice to be here every week and see you guys, even if it was for an hour. Yeah, that was the only downside. It's like we, we shared yeah. the message and poof, we were gone. And it, that always just feels weird, like it's so yeah. strange hopping in church and yeah. jetting out. <laughs> that, that part did feel weird, but it was still great to see you guys every week. It was. Normally it's every other week, but we did get to see you yeah. every week. And so I appreciated that. Yeah, that was kind of neat. That was neat. And we want to thank you for being flexible with uh, Concord's schedule. Um, they appreciate that very much. And uh, so we, we want to recognize that. Well, we don't want to take um, too much time today. We, we came to be blessed with music, with song, with special music, um, with children's story. And then ultimately, we want to know what God has for us today. And so before we share anything, we want to pray, right? Yeah. All right. So let's bow our heads. Father, we want to thank you so much for the privilege it is and the opportunity it is to look at the importance of prayer. Uh, to reconsider it. Lord, there's so many facets to prayer, but uh, we believe that you've put uh, a few points on our hearts and minds to share with your people and for us to even take to heart ourselves. So we want to thank you so much uh, for that opportunity. And we also want to remember, Lord, that that this is your house, that this house is called by your name, and even Jesus said that, that all churches should be called a house of prayer. Uh, So we recognize, Lord, that prayer is the lifeblood um, of our Christian experience. And we thank you for that in Jesus' name. Amen. So this is like our very first time kind of um, doing this. So, so. Be patient with us because that was, that was, he was tapping me during the middle of prayer because it was my turn to kick in. And I was like, wait a second, I'm totally off. We're, we're, We're trying to learn how to do this. So she tapped me back. And I just added more. Just keep going. <laughs> but that's the great thing about prayer. You know, we, we don't specialize in memorized prayers. Jesus right. said, don't pray like the heathen. You know, be real. In essence, that's what he was saying. Right. So that's... So I think we skipped this part. Nope, we did that part. We're here. <laughs> I didn't say this. I know you didn't. <laughs> See, he's, he's messing me up. I, I'm normally better without him. No, <laughs> no you are not. <laughs> 
I'm just I, kidding. I beg to differ. The two shall become one, which means you're half. <laughs> you're you're incomplete without me, and I am certainly incomplete without you. That is that is for sure. Okay, so let me just let me just um, say we we gave what was that? Yeah, you know that's right, gonna, the worst. Yeah, you know what's going to happen? We're going to ho- go home, and as we reflect, I'm going to realize I was wrong. <laughs> <laughs> he normally is. No, no. Go ahead. I love him so much. Um, I did want to say that um, even though, you know, we went through the um, armor of God, it is so important that we realize why we're in a battle. We do have an enemy that is attacking us. And as good as the armor of God is, with all its components, it's still incomplete without a living connection with God. And so that's why we really wanted to emphasize the power of prayer, because Paul does say at the end of going through every armor that we must pray in the spirit. Amen. Absolutely. Uh, and you're actually right. I did skip you. I know, I know. As she's saying that, I'm like, oh, man, she's right again. <laughs> so. I love them. Yeah. Well, that makes, that's what makes us a good team. Yeah. Uh, we accept each other's flaws and we keep each other sharp. Yep, we so. do. But um, absolutely, you know, we, we have to, um, we can never just be clothed in God's armor. We need prayer. So why don't we go to our um, passage? Uh, we're going to look at the complete passage at this time. Uh, you can turn in your Bibles or you can just follow the screen. That's fine. Uh, we are in Ephesians chapter 6. And this time we're going to start in verse 10. Just kind of, once again, get the cover the same ground we have before and see how that leads to what we want to focus on today. Mm -hmm. A final word, Paul says, be strong in the Lord and in his mighty power. Put on all of God's armor so that you will be able to stand firm against all the strategies of the devil. We are not fighting against flesh and blood enemies, but against evil rulers and authorities of the unseen world, against mighty powers in this dark world, and against evil spirits in the heavenly places. Therefore, put on every piece of God's armor so that you will be able to resist the enemy in the time of evil. Then after the battle, you will still be standing firm. Stand your ground, putting on the belt of truth, the body armor of God's righteousness. For shoes, put on the peace that comes from the good news so that you will be fully prepared. In addition to all of these, hold up the shield of faith to stop the fiery arrows of the devil. Put on salvation as your helmet and take the sword of the Spirit, which is the word of God. Pray in the Spirit at all times and on every occasion. Stay alert and be persistent in your prayers for all believers. So the first point we want to make about prayer is when you pray, be specific. We should pray each morning that God blesses our day with his protective care that he shields us from harm and danger. We should thank him for the gift of another day of life. It might be good to also ask God for wisdom for the day. If you expect or have an unexpected situation occur where wisdom is needed, you have asked the Lord for that at the beginning of your day. It's a generally a great idea to pray each day for these things. Amen. And hopefully we all do that at the very least. You know, Lord, cover me today. Uh, Give us wisdom. And these things uh, is so important. General prayer. In addition to that, uh, we really do need to be specific with God, right? Mm -hmm. Because each one of the battles that we face uh, really has a a unique nature of their own. Um, In other words, there's specific people that may be against you. There may be specific people that you're praying for. Uh, There's maybe specific situations with specific circumstances and particular items that you need to pray for. In other words, we're, there is a, a time for general prayer, and that is always true, but the, the reality of it is that we need to pray specifically. Sometimes mm-hmm. you need to call someone out by name in prayer, right? Mm-hmm. Not just, Lord, bless all these people that need your help. But right. I know when um, I was growing up, my parents would always pray over our meals. Um, but when mm-hmm. I started dating you, we actually, for the first time, you started praying uh, you had always been, do- always been doing it, but you prayed for our travels in the car. So yeah. every time we get in the car, you're always praying for traveling mercies. Being specific, God protect us from other drivers, yeah. things that we can't control. Absolutely. So it's important to be specific. Mm-hmm. Um, I don't know if we forget to pray a specific prayer. God's going to somehow in heaven say, you know what, if you had it prayed this way, you know, this wouldn't have happened. But, but we don't want to take that chance, do we? We really want to be specific. So, so think about everything you can think of for the day and pray. 
Now, the Bible gives us some important uh, examples of specific prayer. Uh, and the first one that comes to mind is Elijah. Um, you know, we did spend some time looking at the Elijah message um, and how that relates to us. But let's just, once again, take a glance at that in the book of James, uh, chapter 5, 17 to 18. Uh, the Bible says, Elijah was a human being as we are, and yet when he prayed earnestly that no rain would fall, none fell for three and a half years. Then when he prayed again, the sky sent down rain, and the earth began to yield its crops. Uh, we don't want to go over the whole story, but you do know that this was a situation where Elijah was in the middle of a, of a major spiritual battle, right? Mm -hmm. um, and, you know, Elijah didn't say, Lord, just help me get out of this somehow. Elijah prayed specifically. I mean, his enemies were blaming Elijah for the issues that they were dealing with at the time, you know, in the kingdom run by Ahab and Jezebel. And they also were basically, with all the false prophets, they were basically saying that, you know what, your God, Elijah, is not half as powerful as, as the... Um, the gods of Baal and everything else. So, you know, we wouldn't in a situation like that just pray a general prayer. Um, and we wouldn't probably call the people that we know need to be saved on top of Mount Carmel. That would be very odd in our day, wouldn't it? <laughs> but there may be something specific you should be praying for the people who either are against you or the people that you are trying to win for Jesus, right? Mm -hmm. Jesus does the winning through us, but be specific. Um, pray a specific prayer for them. Lord, this is their belief system. Help them to see the truth. Uh, Lord, this is the music they're, that they're immersed in. Help them to hear what they're not really hearing. Mm -hmm. um, so we need to be specific. That made me think. Um, we have some friends in um, the Conquer Church, and there was a new person coming in, and they were kind of caught up in spiritualism. And we have a friend that is a faith. Oh, yeah. Faith for, I mean, she is a prayer warrior, and she prayed um, that, you know, somehow this business dealing, that, that this new believer coming in, she was hooked up with somebody in spiritualism, and that that business deal would just fall through, and she prayed it in faith, and it was amazing, because all of a sudden, on Facebook, this um, new believer coming in said, I've had it, I'm not going, I'm not dealing with this person anymore, blah, 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 and the prayer warrior contacted her other friend and said, look, I can't believe it. You know, I mean, she prayed in faith and that um, the Lord just used that. Yeah, that was a very specific prayer. Uh, and that's what prayer warriors do. You know, you yes. get specific, you intercede. Uh, you know, we know the, the general message of the prosperity gospel that, that the more wealth you have, mm -hmm. the more evidence it is of God's blessing on your life. And this goes way back centuries, even to the early century churches. Um, but, you know, so we wouldn't want to pray as a reaction to those who are opposed to us, Lord, bless me with the lottery, win the lottery so they can know that you're God. That would, that would be a foolish prayer, wouldn't it? Right. Uh, but let's pray specifically for the particular needs um, of those situations. We need to be specific, I feel. That's right. In the Gospels, we see so many instances of Jesus healing people. He knew what they needed and responded to the actions of others, such as the paralytic that was let down through the roof. But we also have examples where Jesus wanted to know the specific request of those needing his help. In Matthew 20, verse 29 to 30, it says, Now as they went out of Jericho, a great multitude followed him. And behold, two blind men sitting on the road, when they heard that Jesus was passing by, cried out, saying, Have mercy on us, O Lord, son of David. Then the multitude warned them that they should be quiet. But they cried out all the more, saying, Have mercy on us, O Lord, son of David. So Jesus stood still and called them and said, What do you want me to do for you? They said to him, Lord, that our eyes may be opened. So Jesus had compassion and touched their eyes. Immediately their eyes received sight and they followed him. Amen. Jesus, of course, knew already what they wanted, but here he asked them for specifics. What do you want me to do for you? Vague prayers are not enough. And I like that. I like how, how Jesus said, what do you want me to do for you? Oh, um, love it. You know, Jesus already knows, but, mm -hmm. but he wants us to articulate what it is, you know, the nature of our need. But also that he has the power to do something for us. Amen. 
Like, yeah. he cares for us. What do you want me to do for you? Yeah. How can I help you? What a great image of Jesus, isn't yeah. that? And Jesus was the image of the Father. So the Father wants the same. He wants to know what, what ails us and what irks us. Mm -hmm. You know, it's very interesting, this story. Um, it's also found in the book of Mark, and it's found in the book of Luke. And, and Luke records, you know, the same, same similar details, but it's actually uh, Mark who records the guy's name, Bartimaeus. Um, so we've got some extra details, but really the story same, stays the same, and the same message is found in each, where Jesus literally says, what do you want me to do for you? So all three gospel writers, they have a different take on it, but they all included that very important question of Jesus. Yeah. What do you want me to do for you? God already knows, but he wants, us to, to, uh, he wants to hear it from us. Mm -hmm. um, God wants us to pray those important general prayers, but he also wants us to know specifically what it is we are asking of him. When we moved to New Hampshire, we asked the Lord for a few specific things. Um, we wanted a house with some land so that the kids could um, get out and be in nature and be in some fresh air. I mean, we were in California in a valley where, you know, when the fires in California happen, it just, the smog and the fires and it, the air just goes right down and settles in the valley. Um, our son Garrett has very bad asthma because we lived there for seven years. I'm sorry, Garrett. But um, we, we prayed and we asked the Lord to give us, um, you know, bring us to a place, Lord, where we can be a blessing, but also bring us to a place where there's clean air. Mm -hmm. And there is clean air here. Um, and so we appreciate that. We wanted a house where we could have people over. And I know over the past year and a half, we've been trying to, uh, you know, paint the walls and make it a little bit nicer and have you guys over. Our goal is... By the time we leave, we're going to have all of you over to our house, and we're never leaving. Remember, we, we've already That's made right, that so. commitment. We're staying here forever. So um, we have a long time to fix things up for you guys. But um, the other thing was we just really wanted to be a blessing to other people. Yeah, that, that's really important. Um, our yard in California literally was 10 feet beyond yeah. the back door, and then there was a fence. Uh, and then it was about 25 to maybe 30 max mm -hmm. feet wide. Yeah. And we did have a little tiny pool. It's a very mini, kind of a mini pool. Uh, and that was nice in the Bakersfield heat. But our kids didn't, never grew up with running around outside. And so we prayed specifically for those things. And I think because we prayed specifically yep. for those things that, um, that God gave us those things. Yep. So for it doesn't sure. mean that God will always give us what we want. But be specific. Amen? Be specific in your prayers. And that brings us to the next point. Number two, we need to have faith when we pray, right? We have to have faith because the truth is, unless you've never been exposed to the Bible and unless you've just, just heard about the name of Jesus and never really had a personal relationship with him, we really ought to approach him in faith, trusting and believing that he is who he says he is, right? I mean, it's natural for someone who've never, who's never met him to, and this was my experience as a teenager, just sending up a whim of a prayer to wonder if God is even real, but once we know those things, we need to exercise faith. Amen? Amen. That's what we need to do. And that's, that's why the book of Hebrews has this powerful verse about exercising faith. The Bible says, without faith, it's impossible to please him. For he who comes to God must believe that he is and that he is a rewarder of those who diligently seek him. Uh, you know what I like about this verse, and I think you can appreciate this too, is the first part of the verse is kind of like, Oh, it, it forces you mm -hmm. to do something. And none of us like being forced or like being given ultimatums. And this is kind of like the, the first part is like an ultimatum. You have faith or you don't please God, right? Mm -hmm. But then look how the second part softens the first part because the, the message is that when you do have faith in God, he wants to reward you, right? Mm -hmm. And so we must always remember the full context of the verse. God wants to reward us. He wants to be sought after so that he can reward us. And he always does reward us when we diligently seek him. Sure. So diligence. I remember that thing. Um, you know, when it comes to pleasing people, uh, we know what people pleasers are. That's not healthy to just be yes people all the time and be like a doormat. Um, God wants us to be servants. But people pleasers, that's a kind of a different thing. You know, you don't usually try to please somebody you don't know. Um, unless you've been paid for a service, right? Like, um, I guess as an artist, if somebody paid me to, to do a work of art for them, I would, I would want to please them. Uh, or if you're a contractor and you build something for somebody, you want them to be pleased so that they're happy and you walk away and you get re good reviews and everything else. Mm -hmm. But we don't really do that with strangers, like seek mm -hmm. to please strangers. So 
The whole idea of pleasing God is once again, it's hinting at the relationship. Uh -huh. God wants to trust him that he is who he says he is because he's interested in having a friendly relationship with us. He, he wants us to have that. There's a really cool quote from the uh, book of early writings, which I think captures the essence of um, the context of community. It says, ask, believe, and receive. There is too much mocking the Lord, too much praying that is not praying. And the weary angels, and that wearies angels and displeases God. Too many vain, unmeaning petitions. First, we should feel needy, and then ask God for the very things we need, believing that he gives them to us, even while we ask, and then our faith will grow. All will be edified, the weak will be strengthened, and the discouraged and desponding made to look up and believe that God is a rewarder of all those who diligently seek him. I think God is somewhat displeased when we doubt his loving kindness and willingness to meet our need. I know we all have great needs and moments of neediness. And really, it's nice to know that we can please him by simply trusting him when we go to him. I like that about God. You know, um, in a relationship, I think as much for the, for the female as much as for the male, sometimes we're not always crazy about a needy person, right? Mm -hmm. um, clingy, I think sometimes we use that, that term. Um, and, you know, sometimes it's healthy, sometimes it's not. But when you look at that, that quote from early writings, um, it's almost like she's saying, God likes it when we're needy. Mm -hmm. You know, we are to go to God when we feel our need. Have you ever felt needy? Hopefully. Have you ever gone to God when you do feel needy? Well, that's when you need to go, right? God likes it when we go to him. So, you know, a thought came to mind. Think about your first, when you first fell in love. How many years ago that was? Or how few years ago that was? Think about that. <laughs> 20 years. Oh, Sandy's quick to point out. 40. 40. Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. Now, there is an interesting dynamic when you first fall in love. I mean, when you first fall in love, mm -hmm. right, baby? Yes. When you first fall in love and you, it clicks and you know you love each other, mm -hmm. there's still this kind of uneasiness. You're, you're not ready to just ask for a lot of things because there's a little bit of uncertainty, right? Mm -hmm. In other words, like, like when we first dating, we're, we're first dating, um, if you needed a ride, actually, I was the one who needed a ride. That's yeah. a whole other story. Yeah. But um, we'll share that sometime. <laughs> but let's pretend you needed the ride. <laughs> okay. You know, when you first fall in love, you would be like, um, hey, Kevin, you know, could you give me a ride to the store? Uh, but, you know, if you're busy, it's okay. I mean, I can always find someone else to give me a ride. But, you know, I'm, just let me know. Mm-hmm. Isn't that right? Because you're uneasy. You don't want to. You don't want to sabotage. You don't want to blow it. Mm -hmm. But after you've been married a year, a year or two, it's you're bringing me to the store, <laughs> right? <laughs> right, Steve, <laughs> or right, Sandy. You know. So, and we don't want to be like that with God. You know, I, I make the joke, but the the reality is, after you've been in the relationship for a while, we ought to be more comfortable. You know, going to God and and asking for things in faith trusting that we can be, we can assert ourselves in a healthy way, in a respectful way with God, believing that he will give us that ride to the store. <laughs> yeah, that's right? right. We don't want to be demanding of God, yeah. but we should approach God knowing that he wants to respond favorably to our requests. Absolutely. Um, another thing about this chapter in Hebrews is that if you go to the first few verses, um, it says something very uh, interesting about faith as well. Uh, the Bible says, now faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen, for by it the elders obtained a good testimony. By faith we understand that the worlds were framed by the word of God, so that the things which are seen were not made of things which are visible. Uh, you know, none of us were there at creation. And, and even Adam, when he first opened his eyes, everything was already done except for Eve, right? Right. And then God put him to sleep when he made Eve. Uh, when God made Eve. So nobody was there at creation. We believe it by faith. Isn't that right? So those of you who, um, you know, who, who like to be out in nature, when you're in nature, you can see the handiwork of God. Well, that's by faith. That is a byproduct of believing and knowing faith. But it's also living faith that makes the whole idea of, and the theory of evolution sound so absurd, right? Mm -hmm. You know, we can't prove creation. We also can't prove evolution. But the reason why, as Christians, it sounds so absurd 
It's because we, by faith, believe substance, act, faith actually has a substance to it. It, is, it becomes a living reality in our life as if we have the evidence in front of us ourselves, right? By the elders obtained a good testimony. Yeah, that is so true. I really love to garden and I love flowers. And so um, when I'm out in the garden and I'm seeing the handiwork of God, that just really brings me closer. Um, seeing how just God is just so much greater than us. Like we can't create anything other than babies, right? I mean, yeah. we can create things, but we can't create, you know, from a spoken word or, right. you know, but God can just make the flowers and make the seed. And you were telling me just the other day where God, you know, calls life from the seed. Mm -hmm. It's just, we're in awe of God. Yeah. It's neat. So when we were in California, we just didn't have those opportunities. We got a couple of plants around the yeah. house, but now that we've got land and my wife is into gardening, I love it. Yeah. Because, you know, in California, it's like, you know, when, when you did have some free time after working, you know, like what, you know, what is there to do? And so, you know, California is just a different animal. Yeah. And so I always had hoped and wished that you had that opportunity again. Like when we first got married in New York, we did have a house with some property. Um, and I knew you loved gardening. And so now that she has a garden, it's mm -hmm. nice to see my wife just, that's just like her, her sanctuary. Blossom. Yeah, yeah, she blossoms, literally. <laughs> and, uh, and to hear her always say, hey, look at this flower. Look at this one. Isn't this amazing? And, yeah. you know, I appreciate those things. But she brings my attention to flowers I've never seen before. And I'm like, right. wow, that really is pretty incredible. So God speaks to us through nature. And it is really amazing because um, we actually live in the town of Loudoun. And I don't know any of you gardeners, but there is a brand called Proven Winners. And they, they have the most beautiful flowers. If you've ever gone to any of the nurseries, you'll see Proven Winners cups. And we actually live in the same town. Yeah. And it's so amazing to see God's you know, handiwork when they make these big beds of flowers and you got to be VIP to, to shop there, but, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but it's cool knowing that that headquarters yeah. is right there. You didn't yeah. know that. So have faith when you approach God, right? We must have faith. We have to be specific. Yeah. We have to have faith. And that brings us to... Um, point three. Point three. And that is, we can come to God in faith, but if we don't say, not my will, but your will, I think the prayer would be in vain. Yes, Absolutely. Usually, we know exactly what we want. We can see it, we can imagine our lives with it, and we believe it, it is exactly what we need because it's exactly what we want. But the truth is, what we want isn't always what we need. Or, for reasons unknown to us, God has something else in mind. Sometimes, his will has a greater purpose than our requests. Jesus mentioned the will of God when he spoke to the disciples and they asked him how to pray. In Luke 11, verses 1 and 2, it says, Now it came to pass, as he was praying in a certain place, when he ceased, that one of his disciples said to him, Lord, teach us to pray, as John also taught his disciples. So he said to them, When you pray, say, Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name, your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Absolutely. Um, you know, it's interesting because that's not a hard, I should say, that's not an easy approach to prayer is being not my will, not, uh, not my will, but your will your be will. done. Mm -hmm. uh, because what do we fight? What is the greatest battle in us? It's the battle of the will, isn't it? Mm -hmm. The battle of surrender. And so when we don't surrender to God, we're really saying my will is really the one that I want to prevail. Right. And so when you come to God and you do, when you get to that place where you say, not my will, and you accept that, really the assumption behind that approach to God is you're saying, you know what, I do believe, God, that you see far more than I see. Mm -hmm. You're obviously infinitely more wise than I am. And so if I don't get exactly what I'm praying for, I accept that because there's something you see that I don't. And so that's why it is so important to pray that prayer, or to at least have that attitude, not my will, but your will. That's right. That's like an ultimate test of trust. Yeah, an ultimate test of trust. And we kind of know that from experience, yep. right? When, um, before we came to New Hampshire, there was an opportunity that opened up in the um, uh, Washington state for us. And we had a connection there with um, uh, a friend from the conference. And we really just wanted to get out of California. The air was not good. You know, our son's suffering from asthma. And so we um, 
this opportunity opened and we were really excited about it. We were really praying about it. And I, I really had this uh, thing about faith. I got to pray this in faith. And so we, kept, we were looking around on uh, the internet for homes. And this one caught our eye and it was a beautiful home. It had land, it was manicured. And the first thing we thought was, oh, we can have the church over. We can have friends over. We can have the youth. We're like very big into having the youth over. Um, and so that really fit um, what we thought that we needed, right? Yeah. Um, and so for me, I memorized the address to this house. And I prayed every day, every day for this house. I asked the Lord to bless us. I, you know, memorized this, this address and just asked the Lord to give it to us. But that didn't really come about. Yeah, I, and I think even we prayed about that together as a family in, in the room in a, in a circle several times. We prayed over yep. that home. Not that the home is like, you know, that, that's not a sign of your spirituality. But it was, it was a, a vehicle by which we felt we could ministry. do greater ministry. Um, right. The church hadn't found a church of its own yet. Um, and so we really were, ex we got more and more excited about that. Um, but eventually you got the phone call, uh, and it was from the conference, and they told us that they were rotating yeah. some pastors, and they decided to keep one of the in-conference pastors there, which they had told me ahead of time, said there's a chance that we'll keep one of our own pastors. So that didn't fall through, but you know what? Because we had that attitude, at first it was a little disappointing, mm -hmm. but we understood and we recognized that God knows more than we do see. Ah, I love it. <laughs> you know what? It's so amazing because this is exactly where we need to be. Yeah. This but, is exactly where. Did you see our notes? Because that's like right where we were going, Steve. <laughs> we had a vision that this man called Steve. No. <laughs> but the reality is, no, in hindsight, we really do feel the same way. We, we see that that door didn't open up because God had a greater plan. Mm -hmm. um, and even, even though nothing is perfect, we really feel so blessed to be in this district. Mm -hmm. uh, and we feel like God led us here. We feel like we can be a blessing to you. You've already been a blessing to us. Um, and I think that's a great match. When we can do ministry together, when we can pray for each other, we can feel um, that we are a church family yeah. and not, not the separation of leader and people. Um, that we can work together, and that's, God knows exactly, he tailor fits um, where he wants you to be in life, and I think the only way we can discover that is being open to his will, right. rather than our will. Right, for sure. Yeah, so that's very important. Um, there's this neat quote from A.W. Tozer, it's short, but he says, God knows us better than we know ourselves, and he knows exactly what we need and when we need it, Amen. right? So, so God is all wise, he is all powerful, he knows, he knows best. That brings us to point number four. Yep, point number four is careful what you ask for because you just might get it. <laughs> you know, we don't always talk about that one too much, but we've, uh, we know that is true. You really do need to be careful what you ask for. The truth is, um, you may feel convinced in your heart that what you want is what you need. And sometimes when you're insistent enough with God and you're not open to his will and he for some reason can't get you to see the bigger picture because of selfishness and stubbornness and that we speak to ourselves we're no different than you mm -hmm. sometimes God allows you to have what you're asking for so that you can learn an important lesson isn't that right mm -hmm. so we have to be careful what we ask for because we just might get it right and it kind of connects with point number three and that yeah. is to say not my will lord but your will i know that i have a personal experience where um i was praying for something um i was uh working per diem for the veterans hospital and i love the veterans i love those people um but um i wanted to work uh in the clinic full time but what I didn't realize was it actually took me away from working one-on-one -on -one with patients and more into, um, it was kind of more behind the scenes, working a lot on a computer. And at that time, it wasn't really what I wanted to do. But I prayed and I prayed and I prayed and I prayed and I said, Lord, no, this is really what I need. This is what I want. And it, it was it was amazing because the Lord was gracious to me. He actually gave me what I wanted, but... Um, what ended up actually happening was someone else got hired for the job, but the manager knew that I really wanted it. And so she said, I know you really want it, 
the job was given to so-and-so, but what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna let you work per diem with us and you can train and see um, how it, it goes. And I trained and I hated it. <laughs> I hated it. And so it was really awesome because my status as per diem didn't change. I was able to switch back over to the emergency room and actually do what I really wanted to do with the patient. So um, that was an experience that God was just so gracious, though, because he kind of gave me an out, too, even though I kept praying, Lord, 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 no, this is what I want. I really should have been praying, Lord, you know me better than I know myself, and I want what you want for me. I remember, I think I remember joining you in that prayer. Yeah. Like, Lord, this is what we want. We're yep. convinced this is what we need. And it turned up not, not a disaster, but it certainly no. wasn't, you felt out of your element. Yep. <clears throat> yeah. Yeah. And, um, and that's, uh, we got to be very careful what we, right. what we pray for. We actually have an example in the Bible to show, too. Yeah, one we probably all know. Uh, Israel insisted on having what? A king. They insisted. Mm -hmm. Uh, because all Israel knew of how the other nations operated was that they had kings. You know, they had rulers. And Israel was convinced that that is how they were going to operate the best. If they had a king over them, because really that means that they wouldn't have to speak to God face to face. Uh, not literally, but you remember they, they had a frightening experience at the bottom of the mountain. And ever since then, they didn't listen to Moses. And so when push came to shove, they said, you know, it's better for us to communicate with God through a king rather than directly or through the priest. And so Israel insisted, right? They insisted on God giving them a king. We actually can hear the conversation in 1 Samuel uh, 8, 4 through 7. Then all the elders of Israel gathered together and came to Samuel at Ramah, Ramah and said to him, Look, you are old and your sons do not walk in your ways. Now make us a king to judge us like all the other nations. But the thing displeased Samuel when they said, give us a king to judge us. So Samuel prayed to the Lord, and the Lord said to Samuel, heed the voice of the people in all that they say to you, for they have not rejected you, but they have rejected me that I should not reign over them. Those are scathing words, aren't they? And Israel got what they wanted. And who was that king? Saul, right? He was the tallest. He was the handsome. In fact, the Bible says he was the most handsome in all of Israel, right? And so when Israel saw him, they were like, that's the guy. And that turned out to be an utter disaster. So when you pray, be sure to pray for what you want as long as it is not out of the harmony of God's will and what he's revealed in his word. If God is telling you that something you want is not good for you, even though in itself it might, might not be a bad thing, don't insist upon it. A good example is money. Money is not evil. It's the love of it which is the source of much evil. Some people can handle large quantities of money. That same amount of money in the hands of others might be a snare. Some people will use money as a blessing for others, and others will destroy their own lives by the ability to afford vice and other snares. I did hear an um, analogy one time, and somebody said a brick can be used to build a hospital, or someone can take that brick and throw it through a window and destroy someone's property. It has to do with our heart and yeah. how we deal with that. Because money is amoral. Uh, and not to focus on money, but, but that's a, it's a great example. Um, and we don't know ourselves. You know? We all would like to be rich. Come on, right? Yeah. Nobody, nobody in here would want to be rich? <laughs> we all would like to be rich, you know. Or at least have the, the ability to not worry about bills and money. We all at least have that dream. Um, but the reality is we don't know ourselves. And we have plenty of examples in the world and maybe even people that we know uh, or through acquaintances or so forth who are incredibly blessed with money and use it as a blessing. I don't want to name names, but there are people in our own churches that have wealth and they use it as a blessing for the church. And then there are other people that we may know who have, whose lives have been destroyed because they do not know how to handle money. We got a casino right down on 106, right? I've never walked through those doors, but I bet if you go through those doors, there's people blowing money. Yeah. It may not be a lot, but they're addicted to the idea of having wealth and if they were actually to have that wealth, you know, statistics prove that many times people end up less happy than they were before they want it. Mm -hmm. So be careful what you pray for. That's right. And that brings us to our last point, which is point number five. Be real with God. 
Don't pretend to be something you're not. He accepts you as you are and knows what you can become through his power. Just be real, be honest, be genuine with him. Another great quote is found in the book Steps to Christ, and it says, Prayer is the opening of the heart to God as a friend. Not that it is necessary in order to make known to God what we are, but in order to enable us to receive him. Prayer does not bring God down to us, but brings us up to him. Amen. I love that quote. That's from Steps to Christ. And uh, that's one of those ones you always go back to. That little book will grow with you um, as no matter how long you've been a Christian. And what a powerful quote that is. It's the opening of the heart to God as to a friend. And you know what? The thing about friends, good friends, real friends, not fake friends, is that they're genuine, right? Mm -hmm. I mean, the person, if you have, if you're blessed enough to have a BFF, best friend, what is it? Forever. forever. Best friend forever. If you're blessed enough to have a best friend, it's because you trust that person. Mm -hmm. And there's an, an openness in the relationship, you know, where you're not afraid to be who you are. You know that they accept you and they know that you accept them. And so, you know, when we read this quote, it seems like it's almost the same thing, that God wants us to be not just friends, but almost best friends mm -hmm. with him. He wants us to trust him, and he wants us to be real with him, right? right. Um, it's very, very important that, that we don't fake things, that we, we go to God and we communicate what is on our minds, and we're open with our troubles, with our wants, with our desires, our hopes and dreams. we got to be real with God. That's right. I love that, because it's all about a communication and a, mm -hmm. and a relationship with God. With all the perplexities of life on our shoulders, we don't want to feel as though we need to fake it. And approaching, when approaching the only being in the universe that can help us out. Jesus said in Matthew 6, 6, But you, when you pray, go into your room. And when you have shut your door, pray to your Father who is in, in the secret place. And your Father who sees in secret will reward you openly. You know, um we may have all experienced, I imagine we all have, when you're in a crowd and all the attention's on you, you know, you try to put on, put your best foot forward. Uh, you don't want to embarrass yourself. So on some level, we, we try to portray ourselves maybe a little bit more confident than we really are, um, maybe a little bit more composed than we really are. Um, you know, I don't want to use the term masks, but we, we've all experienced, you know, that, that pressure. And so that's what people do in public, right? I mean, just look at Hollywood. Everything looks great on the outside, right? But how much turmoil and chaos is, chaos is on the inside. But, but it's neat because when you think about Jesus' words, go into the, your, your room, into your room. I mean, when you're in your room by yourself, guess what? You don't have to put on a show, do you? Mm -hmm. That's where you can completely be yourself. So Jesus, in essence, is saying, go into your room because that's where you don't need to worry about putting on a mask. You don't need to worry about what other people are thinking. That's where you go to be real with God. That's where you've got privacy, uh, where you're not pressured to be uh, someone who you aren't or someone who you think you should be. That is uh, where Jesus wants you to be. Another really neat quote is um, from Charles um, Oswald Chambers. Sorry. Um, everyone, anybody ever read the book, His Utmost for My Highest? What a fantastic yes. book. Boy, so good. So many good things in there. He says, to say that prayer changes things is not as close to the truth as saying Prayer changes me, and then I can change things. God has established things so that prayer, on the basis of redemption, changes the way a person looks at things. Hmm. That's almost very similar to what, what uh, it says in Steps to Christ, isn't it? Very similar concept. So basically, private prayer is what we need for the reshaping of our perspective, right? We need to be real with God, because when we are, it enables God to fill us with his spirit, and it changes our perspective on things. That's right. It's hard to imagine that God of the universe wants to be friends with us or considers us his friends, but that's exactly what Jesus says in John 15, verses 13 to 15. It says, Greater love has no one than this, than to lay down one's life for his friends. You are my friends if you do whatever I command you. No longer do I call you servants, for a servant does not know what his master is doing. But I have called you friends. For all things that I heard from my father, I have made known to you. 
Friends spend a lot of time with each other, and if you're fortunate enough to have a best friend, you want to spend a lot of time with them and hang out with them. I think that is exactly what God wants with us. Going back to that best friend thing, right? You know, the, the whole reality of this passage in Ephesians is that we are in a battle, right? We are in a battle. We are on a battlefield, whether we like it or not. If we've called ourselves Christians, we're in a battlefield. If we are Seventh-day Adventist Christians, the heat of the battle is even worse. Worse, yeah. And there's no better place to have a best friend that you can trust than on the battlefield. Amen? Amen. And that best friend is Jesus. And that's what God wants us to know. We need to be clothed with the complete armor of God, but we should never take one step forward in that army, right, Joey? In that armor, unless we are bathed and covered in prayer, right? Specific prayer, prayers of faith, prayers where we say not... Um, not our will, but God's will be done. Uh, prayers where we say careful, where we understand careful what we ask for because we might just get it. And prayers where we are real mm. and genuine with him. So, there you have it. <laughs> Those are the five points we have for you. That's the five points that every Christian warrior has when it comes to prayer. There's a whole lot more, but we wanted to keep it minimal. It's easy to remember five than it is to remember ten points or Probably you could find 20 or 25 points in the Bible. Well, I don't know. You read a, a recent um, study that said that when the uh, congregants leave the church, they only remember yeah, five, they, five, ten percent maybe of what you said. So yeah, ten percent at a really good sermon. Hmm. If we had yeah. to pick one, which one would you say is the most important? I have mine. What, what do you think? Oh, that's a good question. Didn't even think about that one. Um, let's see here. Wow, specific faith, not. I think I would go with faith. Really? Yeah, I think I would lead with that because in my mind, other things would fall into place with that. But I don't know. That's just personal. What, I think, what would you go with? I think for me, it would be number three. Number three. Because yeah, surrender, surrender is such a big deal when you're dealing with prayer. Yeah. You're asking for, you know, like Jesus when yeah. he was in Gethsemane, like just you know, he knew he had to what he had to go through, and yet he was like, not my will, but your will, Father. Yeah. Hey, you know what's interesting about that? Actually, to pray that prayer, not my will but yours, actually is a prayer of faith. Yeah, so that, that's, that's a good true. pick, number three. I'm kind of curious. Um, raise your hand if you think yeah, one yeah. Is, it, is it for you. Raise your hand if you think one is the most important. There's no right answer or wrong answer. Yeah. How about two? So number two is have faith. Right, have faith. What about number three? Yeah. Yeah, you got a lot of the similar ones for that. Yep. Uh, what about number four? Careful what you pray for. Yeah. <laughs> <We're afraid of laughs> <that one. laughs> and then what about number five be real be genuine yeah it's hard. i mean they're all important right yeah. they're yeah. all important it's really hard to say one is um less or more important than the other joey i think number two will lead to the other four uh, number two would what oh uh, lead to number four oh that's true yeah so some of these you could probably kind of link in a progression they're all important. The most important thing is to actually pray, right? Right. Is to spend time in prayer um, because we cannot live without it. So if you remember anything from today's sermon, remember five things. <laughs> <laughs> or right. one. Or one, yeah, number three. <laughs> all right, let's pray. Father, we thank you so much for laughter. We're more importantly, uh, we're thankful for truth. And for the fact, Lord, that you are our friend and you want to communicate with us, and you want us to communicate with you. And Lord, the one thing about prayer that we could also focus on in a separate message is the fact that communication is a two-way street. So help us not just to be speakers uh, and sharers of our problems, but Lord, please help us to be listeners, uh, to listen to what you have for us. So grant us the wisdom we need each and every day. Grant us the protection we, we so desperately need in a world where things are so unpredictable. But also, Lord, help us to pray the right way and to remember these principles so that we can be more effective, uh, more blessed, and more confident as we walk this road to glory, which goes right through the center of a battlefield. We thank you for these things, Lord, asking them in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Well, God bless all of you. I hope you have a wonderful Sabbath, and I hope that the series is, stays with you. Amen. Amen. Blessings to you. I guess we have a closing hymn, and that hymn is... 284.
did better than I did. That's the first time I've ever sung that one. <laughs> well, God be praised either way. We'll learn it one day. Father, thank you so much for this Sabbath you've granted us. Now, as we go forth from this place, may we be surrounded by your protective care, filled with your loving kindness, empowered by your spirit to go forth and to share others the beauty of the gospel and the truth of your soon return. For this is our prayer in Jesus' name. Amen. God bless all of you.